All right. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tom Cassidy here with Four Clicks. We're going to go through getting ready for Fallout, one of our spotlights. Um, if it seems a little bit familiar, <clears throat> uh, that's because it is. We did a similar one uh, just over a year ago for our very first one. We thought it was pretty good information to go over again. And uh, we've got a bunch of new cool tools for all those of you who've been paying attention over the last year, so I'm going to toss in a couple of those as we go along. Um, Go ahead and ask everyone to mute their phones, and then uh, we're going to record this so other people can use it and you can keep it, uh, get back to it and re-watch re it if you want to. Um, go ahead and jump in if anybody has any questions, and then we'll have time at the end for that too. All right? So today we're going to walk through, um, we're going to touch real quickly on contract guide settings. We're going to spend most of our time on updating existing estimates to the new uh, RS means pricing. And then lastly, we're going to touch on uh, copy and paste and see how we can do the same thing as we reprice. When we paste, we can reprice at the same time. So I'm going to jump over here to E4 Clicks. And we can see right over here that we've got a new project, or an existing project, I'm sorry, that we did in 2011. And if we open it up, we can see inside of the estimates, we actually have line items in here from the 2011 RS means. So we're going to go ahead and update those. But before we do that, I want to show you real quickly on the contract guide settings, because I told you I'd do that, and I almost forgot. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a contract here. And we use contract guide settings. And what that allows us to do is for all different contracts that we're trying to keep track, what we can do is when we add a project, we can associate that with a contract, and then that contract can let us know if we're air cost or an overhead and profit pricing, if we need to integrate a CCI directly into the line items, or if we're going to do that CCI as a totaling component. So it's important to note that we want to either integrate the CCI into the line items or do the C cost index as a totaling component. If we do both, then we end up double dipping and either go too high twice or too low twice. Um, so this lets us do that if we want to. So I'm just going to leave that off and do it as a totaling component. And we want to lock down both the bear cost versus overhead and profit pricing, or if we want to lock down the city cost index being implemented, we could do that. I'm going to leave them open for this example so I can show you a couple other things. Uh, but for this example, we're going to go ahead and do a 2011 saver and use contract guide settings to make sure we get the exact update that we want. All right, so now I'll jump back to actually updating an existing estimate. Okay, so I got a pop quiz for you. What are the two things we need to do to update an existing estimate to the new pricing? First thing is we update the actual line item pricing. So we want to take these 2011 RS means facilities items and make them 2012 RS means facilities items. Then what we want to do is we actually want to make sure that we update our totaling components to make sure we're using the correct CCI values as well as totaling components that can change from year to year depending on your contract, that kind of deal. So those are the two steps that we need to do to update our pricing, and we're going to walk through each one of those. All right, so how do we tag all of the estimates inside of our project? If we hit Ctrl on the keyboard, for those of you who love the hotkeys, we can do that, or we can use our toolbar icons to do the same thing. Oops, it'd be that one there, tag all estimates. You can always right-click and go through that as well. Now, pretty awesome. We made a change. For those of you who have been looking through and listening to our spotlights and hearing our, our, our um, doing newsletters and that kind of stuff, we always had batch modify tag estimates, but we also have now batch modify line items. The difference being, the estimates allow us to do things like totaling components and status and that kind of deal. Line items allows us to actually touch all of the line items in all of the estimates that are tagged, so super powerful. In this specific case, we want to update the line items from 2011 to 2012, so that's line items, so we want to bat jump into batch modify line items. When we do that, we can see now that we have all the tabs here that we can change a whole bunch of different stuff. I like RS means multi-reprice. We also have reselect guide. Okay, who knows the differences between RS means multi-reprice 
and reselect guide. Select guide lets you do one pre guide at a time. So either the facilities or the assemblies or the master composite or the trades or an IDIQ, that kind of deal. All means multi reprice lets us touch all of the RS means guides at one time. So we can do the assemblies, the facilities, the master, and the trades all in one quick step. So that's always my favorite. All of this wording over here says press the select guides button, so that's what I'm going to do. All right, this brings up guide settings. Here we go ahead and say, yes, I want to use the contract guide settings so I can look at my project's contract and make sure I get the right settings. We could also use a different kind of setting. We could select choose and go through that. We could go to favorites. I won't get into that too deep right now, but that gives us the opportunity to set up our different pricing. We can remember here a very important point. When we reprice an estimate, it doesn't mean we have to go from one year to another. We could also use it to go from bare cost pricing to overhead and profit pricing. We could go without a CCI integrated in each line item to having a CCI integrated into each line item or changing which one we do. So a lot of cool stuff there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn off the ignore awesome line items. What this is going to do, it's going to actually handle not only the RS means line item, but it can handle all the demo line items that we make, the R&R, &R, remove and replace, and those average line items that come in as customized. So this will actually reprice a custom line item that we use one of those cool tools with from one year to the next. 12 is the year I want, and we can see that we can do the trades as well as all of the guides, and which one is the default if it can't find that line item in um, given line item as in book that it has. All right, so I'm just going to click OK. That's going to bring us back to the batch modify line item window. We can see that we've got everything summarized. It's going to change all 336 of these items. And when we press Process, it's going to go ahead and touch all 336 of those line items and reprice them from 2011 facilities to the 2012 facilities. That was a little bit quicker than I could do uh, estimating myself. So we can see that we've increased about $5,000. And there was two line items out of the 336 that um, had errors associated with them. So if we go over here to error column, the far one here, it said there was no line item replacement available for that. So you, uh, sometimes RS means will change line items. Um, out an old technology and put in a new one and do all kinds of different stuff. So out of the 336, we only really need to go and evaluate these two to see um, which ones to, to reprice them. Sorry about that. All right. We can also go see that we had a couple of custom items in the electrical estimate. So you can see these went from custom, and now it's going to go and reprice it with the 2012 facilities. And this was in the 26 electrical one where these two that we had the errors on were in 22 and 23. So let's just go touch base with those real quick to see what those look like. So we can notice that we went, um, we updated the pricing. I should have paid attention to see what that was. I think it was 184-ish, something like that. So we could see that we added that 5,000, whatever it was. Um, I should have pointed that out beforehand. But let's go look at this estimate, 22 and 23. We can see if we just page down here, we're looking for an error icon. So here's an example where we have the little error icon. It couldn't find this modifier in this case, and so it left it as a 2011 facilities, and we can go evaluate whether that's an applicable item or not or what the, the new line item that we would need. And we can see, it, again, another one here, the metal duct fittings. And then we could go in and open the 2012 guide and find the right ones. For the electrical, I'm going to use uh, one of our filters here to go to the custom line items, and we could see that there was a remove and replace, two remove and replace items where we went and found a line item, used one of our tools to zero out the material and just use the labor there to get us to the new pricing. So it updated those, and now we're a custom line item based on the 2012 facilities. So we selected all the work for us except for those two items, which I think we can handle. All right? Now, what was the next step? We did updating of the line items. Now we need to update our total performance, right? So if we go back and look at our right-click menu options, instead of back modifying the line items like we did a second ago, totaling components live at the estimate level, so we're going to go look at batch modify tagged estimates. So when we jump in here, we're batch modifying the tagged estimates. We can go to apply totaling. 
we can choose our schema. If we double click, we get our list that are associated with our contract, which was one of our new filters, which is awesome. We can see all of our active ones, see any inactive and all ones as well. So I'm just going to stick with the favorite standard ones here. And then uncheck this one. It remembers our last settings. And I just want to show you some of these options here. So we have clear existing totaling components. But the two that I normally use is purge and delete all unused totaling components from the project and purge and delete all totaling components from the project. So personally, if I'm touching all of the estimates inside of a project, I'm going to use this bottom one, purge and delete all totaling components. Because I'm going to touch every single estimate. I don't want anything sticking around and messing anything up or whatever. So I'm going to purge everything out. If I'm only touching a portion of these, then I'll use the middle one here, purge and delete the unused ones. So it'll clear it out and then purge um, only the ones that are no longer in use. And it won't add all my totaling components in the other ones that I don't have tagged. So I'm all tagged. I'm going to go ahead and purge and delete all totaling components from this project. And I'm going to hit process. And this time I'm going to watch the dollar value go from 191,000. It's going uh, updated all seven of them. And it's jumped up 201,000. So it could go up, could go down. Uh, but in this case, it went up a little bit. If we go over to our general tab, we can see that now we've got the 2012 CCI applied right there. All right. So I showed you real quickly there how to update the line items. 2012 RS Means facility, as well as get the new totaling components if you need to change those to the new CCI quarter or the new um, coefficient or whatever it may be. All right? Now, I want to play a little bit. Let's say we have a brand new project and we want to copy and paste our existing estimates and paste those into a new project. All right? I think we did this in our last spotlight. It was a, at least a spotlight or two ago. Um, so I'm just going to touch on one of our new tools and not go through everything, but I'm going to insert a new project real quick. I'm going to use that saver again, standard hours, and I'm just going to go say this is a new project here, and I'm going to go ahead and add that project. When I add that project, i got no estimates here. I want to go and collect and copy from, from some of my existing estimates because they're awesome estimates. All right? So... If you remember, we have a new tool called Project Explorer. If not, I highly suggest one of the other spotlights or looking at um, some of our readmes or newsletters. I'm going to click on that. And what that lets us do is navigate through all of our existing projects and then copy and paste some of the existing estimates. So I'm going to grab these two estimates and I'm going to add the tagged estimates to the estimate clipboard. I'm going to go to the project and tag, oops. Sorry. Go ahead, project, and I'm going to tag the mechanical piping, and I'm going to add that estimate to the clipboard. So notice now I've got three estimates in my clipboard. I'm going to go one more project here, and I'm going to get some finishes and computer flooring. I'm going to add these tagged estimates to the clipboard. Give me five estimates. Now, as a little uh, hint for me, I know that the 08 renovate bathrooms has 2008 RS means line items. The 09 mechanical piping has 2009 RS means line items. And again with these, the 09 stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and hit close. And we can see that we have those five estimates in the estimate clipboard. I'm going to go ahead and paste these into the estimate. The toolbar icon up here. Now I've got my two steps again. I can choose the year for line items. I know I have a mixture of 2008 in 2009, I could have a mixture of anything, and I'm going to set those all to 2012. So I'll do that by turning on the automatically reprice the items. I'm going to select the guides. This looks familiar here. I'll process the custom in this case and go to 2012. I'm going to use the contractual value again. And then, remember the second step was the totaling components. So totaling components, we have several examples. We could use the totaling components that came with the estimates. And again, we were in several different projects, so who knows what those are. We'd have a, an interesting mixture. Um, normally, I use the use default project totaling components because I created this project and specifically chose the markups that I'd like. We could select from our list, and we could use none. So I'm going to use the default, and when I click OK, this is going to bring all five estimates in. 
and then it's going to reprice, in this case, 260 line items, again, quicker than I could even think about opening the book. And I can see here that I've got several errors. It looks like I've got six replacements and one guide not available. So this crew was a custom, and there was no, uh, because it's a crew, we don't uh, automatically update those from year to year. That is added on a special tool um, that brings it in custom. So we'll have a look at that one. And these other six had no line item to replace it. And it looks like most of those are two from 2008. So out of those 260 line items, we need to look at seven. And we can see that it added about 23 grand to our estimate. The reprice itself did, I'm sorry. So we can see that we have a different total from what was copied to what was pasted because we repriced and we put new totaling components on. And then we can look in here and we can look in any of these and we're going to find the 2012 facilities posed except for the ones that had the errors on them. Does that make sense a little bit? Hopefully. All right. So that gives you a little look at repricing. Hopefully this will get you year, ready for year end. We always had projects at Peterson where I used to work. Um, where we got ready at year end and then um, had to didn't award it and had to reprice it almost every other year end um, when we thought we were going to get money, that kind of deal. And then obviously we can use it any time of the year um, to get our good and accurate pricing and get us a, a leg up on the estimating process. Um, you could definitely use the, the other um, reference materials to learn some of these tools. If you didn't quite get everything or whatever, you can obviously watch this again. There's other spotlights out there. Um, we have two more training classes this year, um, one in October in the Springs, Colorado Springs, and one in November in Orlando. So feel free to sign up for those on the website on our training schedule. Uh, but that's us up for today. Um, if there's any questions, please let me know. Um, otherwise, have a fantastic day.